Okay, I think we need to talk about this 48 megapixel business on the 16 Pro. 48 megapixels on the ultra wide is the main difference be going from the 15 to the 16 Pro. And well, I'm a little bit disappointed. In my recent video with astrophotography with this new phone, uh, I shot at 48 megapixels, but it didn't shoot at 48 megapixels. A lot of people were saying, you're only shooting at 12 megapixels. You need to go in the settings and change your max raw your, to, to 48 megapixels and or your um, HEIF. That as a company, they pronounced HEIF. Users can now shoot in 48 megapixel HEIF. HEIF to 48 megapixels. And I'll tell you what, I've done that. And that's just the way it works. The 48 megapixels is 48 megapixels when the conditions are perfect. It's not all the time. On a side note, before we get into the megapixel stuff, the ultra wide on the 15 Pro and the ultra wide on the 16 Pro, one's at 12 megapixel, one's at 48 megapixel. And I'll tell you what, that 16 Pro, that's soft around the edges. It's, it's not good. <laughs> it's been disappointing. Firstly, let's just talk very, very briefly about why megapixels matter for photography. Where in times gone by, megapixels were the things considered to be good. We basically looked at it and went, the higher the megapixel count, the better the camera. But as time went on, processing power and the size of that sensor is what mattered. Generally speaking, cameras with large sensors and smaller megapixels are good for video and low light photography and sensors that are or other cameras that have a, a large sensor and a high megapixel count they're really good for stills and printing mainly printing on a side note my very first digital camera was a sony camera and it shot it shot at 0.8 of a megapixel it even had a floppy disk that you put into the side of this thing to save your images on i think you could hold like four or five images on a floppy disk that was all that was 1.44 megabytes per disk, so the file size was actually small. We'll get to file size in a minute, because that's where we're going. Now today, the majority of DSLRs are shooting somewhere between 15 megapixels and 30 megapixels. There's, there's ones that go lower, there's ones that go higher, but the vast majority of them sit somewhere in between that. Now, how do all these megapixel business relate to phone photography? Because it's different. Phones almost always have a smaller sensor size than a DSLR. And in many cases, they have a higher megapixel count than many DSLRs. In fact, Samsung, and I'm sure there's others, they do like 200 megapixels on some of their cameras. Why? Phones do most of their photography magic through the processor and computational photography and, well, these days, AI as well. So on the on the front foot there, we are not comparing apples with apples when it comes to this. But going back to the comments about the 48 megapixel in the night mode and doing the astrophotography. Well, many folks out there know that modern smartphones will do the pixel binning. So we've got what that essentially is. It can be complicated, but it doesn't need to be just to get your head around how it works. If you think of a megapixel on a 48 megapixel camera as a square, and when we pixel dump, four of those squares become one. So the square is bigger. And the bigger it is on the good size sensor, the more light it lets in. That's just how it works. And it works this way with night mode on the iPhone all the time. You can go into your settings there and change everything to 48 megapixel. It will make no difference whatsoever. It's still going to shoot at 12 megapixels. It just needs to because of the pixel beating. It also does this with macro. It won't let you shoot 48 megapixel with macro on the 16 Pro. It's still gonna do it at 12 megapixels. During perfect lighting conditions like it is right now, you can absolutely shoot 48 megapixels on this phone. But does it really matter? Do we really, really need to shoot at 48 megapixels? You may remember earlier when I was talking about the higher megapixels on the DSLRs, we went with a higher, D higher megapixel on the DSLRs. In fact, all the DSLRs that I shoot weddings and stuff with, they're a higher megapixel so that I can print larger. But only 10 to 15% of photos ever taken on a phone are ever printed. So we're not exactly a big printing community. We use it for you know, looking back on memories. We use it for social media. We use it for that sort of thing. Only 10 to 15% of the photos are actually printed. So why does it matter? Smartphones are capturing more than 90% of the photos in the world. In the world. That's including DSLRs, point-and-shoot cameras, all that sort of stuff. 
phone cameras are taking more than 90% of the photos worldwide. So think about this. Over 2 trillion photos are taken on smartphones every year. That's 5 billion a day. That's over 50,000 photos every second. That's a shitload of photo. Think about this. One 12 megapixel photo, JPEG photo, from an iPhone is about one and a half megabytes in file size. It's not very big, one and a half meg. A 48 megapixel raw file is about 40 megabytes, over 40 megabytes in many cases, of storage space. I think you're seeing where I'm going here. Do you remember the iPhone 3G? It was my very first iPhone, and I had an eight gigabyte phone. First iPhone, eight gigabyte 3G. That phone launched with two options only. It was an eight gig and a 16 gig. That was all. Had a smaller camera, much, much smaller megapixel camera. I think it might've only been two or three megapixels. So the file size was small and the price was tiny. Allowing for inflation that iPhone 3G today would cost about $375. A few days ago, I spent nearly two and a half grand on a 512 gig iPhone 16 Pro. So one really could be forgiven for thinking that the higher megapixel count, considering so few of us actually print photos from our phones, one could be forgiven for thinking that the higher megapixel count it's all about storage, because when you buy a phone, you get two options really. You get an option of colour and an option of storage. Is it really for printing? Is it really about marketing? Or is it really just about the dollar to get you to spend even more on that bloody expensive phone? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. One, do you print photos? Two, what is the storage size on your phone, regardless of the brand, iPhone, Samsung, whatever, how much storage are you carrying now versus what you had when you first started down this phone photography journey? Because so I went from eight gig to 512 gig. <laughs> That's just nuts. All right, guys, catch you later.